What's up everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I wanna show you how to use the drag modes in Logic Pro. The drag modes affect how regions are treated as you move them around or drag them around the timeline. Now, the reason why I waited so long to introduce the drag modes is that they sort of interplay with many of Logic's editing tools and the grid snap modes or the grid snap values. So you kind of have to be familiar with basic editing in the tracks area first before you can start using the drag modes effectively. Before we jump into the tutorial, I want to quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. Do you want to take your music to the next level? Are you a musician looking for a collaborative platform to share your work and receive feedback from your peers or bandmates? Look no further than Boombox.io. Boombox allows musicians to upload their tracks and leave time-stamped feedback for each other. This makes it super easy to collaborate on music remotely from the comfort of your own home studio. Head over to Boombox.io and sign up today and get 10 gigabytes of free storage. Your music will thank you. Okay, so let's get into the drag modes. There are five of these. Overlap, no overlap, X-Fade, and that's short for crossfade, shuffle right, and shuffle left. I'm going to start with X-Fade mode because I find this one the most useful, and it's also the one I use the most. What X-Fade does is it allows you to automatically crossfade two or more overlapping audio regions. So for example, my synth pad here, what you can do with the X fade drag mode is you can actually just drag over the boundary or the end point of the region here and just overlap it with another region. And what this will do is it'll automatically create a cross fade at the length of the overlap. So if I make this a bit longer, it'll be a longer cross fade. If I do it in this direction, it'll be a cross fade in that direction. So this is just a real quick and easy way to create cross fades using the trim tool that's embedded in the region borders. And just like with the fade tool and other fade functions, if you hold shift and control, you can go in here and you can adjust the curve and center point of the fade. You can also hover over the left or right side of the crossfade and extend the length of the crossfade. Now for demonstration purposes, I actually have my click zones turned off. So if you didn't watch the previous video on this, you can go up to Logic Pro settings, and then go to general, and then from here go to editing, and you can actually turn on or off fade tool click zones. If you turn this on, you can actually access the curve here, the curve or center point, or the length of the fade without having to use the shift control shortcut. So that's just a little workaround if you want to use the X fade drag mode in conjunction with the fade tool click zones. For demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that off. Now, another thing this can be really helpful for is if you have multiple regions that need to be crossfaded, like these drums up here. So if you select a track, it'll actually select all of the regions on that track as long as you don't have the cycle mode engaged. You can then, with snap mode turned off, just simply drag this over to the left or trim it over to the left just a bit and it'll actually trim all of those audio regions over to the left just by a bit. And with X fade drag mode turned on, it'll automatically create a quick crossfade at all of those edit points. So this is a quick way, especially for drums like this, to sort of combine some of these little slices together and then just drag over them and press J to join them all as a new region without affecting the quality of the transient at each edit point. Now, I do want to show you one more way to do this that does not require the X fade drag mode. If you select a bunch of adjacent regions like this, and then if you press Control Option X, this will actually create a default crossfade at every single adjacent audio region. The only problem here is that these crossfades are going to sort of reduce the quality of these transients because the transient falls right on the adjacent editing point, but I wanted to show you that as well. Now, by default, this crossfade length is 20 milliseconds. If you want to change that, I'm gonna go ahead and just press undo first. Go up to Logic Pro Settings, Audio, and then from here, go to Editing. And here you can see an option for crossfades for merge and take comping. This also affects the crossfade time for using take folders and merging your composite takes together. However, this also affects that control option X shortcut. 
So if I want my crossfade time to be a bit shorter, like six milliseconds, for example, I can do that. And now I can just use that shortcut again, control option X, and it creates a six millisecond crossfade at the joining point. So I find this really helpful if I have a lot of open edit points like this that need crossfades. It's an even quicker way of adding batch crossfades rather than using the region inspector as I did in a previous video. Now for a situation like this with drums, the X fade drag mode is probably going to be the best option here because this is going to preserve the detail and the transients best. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Then I'll just drag over all of this. And again, I'll just press J to join these all together. Next up, I wanna talk about the no overlap drag mode. This is used when you don't want regions to overlap. So for example, if I change my snap mode to bar, I use the marquee tool here to maybe take this part of the beat and separate it out. And maybe I want this bar to actually be right here at bar one. Without using no overlap, what I'd have to do is drag over that first bar and delete it. Or I could simply just trim it with the trim tool and the pointer tool. But when you use no overlap, this sort of auto trims the region for you. So if I hold option and duplicate this over here, what this will do is it'll sort of replace that bar with this region that I duplicated over and sort of auto trims the audio that would be underneath this region. So it's not overlapping at all, hence the name no overlap. Now, if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to bring in a couple beats of this, I could switch over to beat mode, and then I can trim this up from this side and do something like that. I could totally do that, or I could trim it up from the, other, uh, the opposite side, just like so. And again, it auto trims or an auto replaces the audio that is there. So that's really what I find no overlap helpful for when you want to replace audio in one area with a region from another area, you just simply drag it over and it auto trims the audio or duplicating the audio over again, it just auto trims and auto replaces the audio in that area. Next up is overlap. This one is a bit misunderstood. Basically what this does is it allows you to drag one region over another region while preserving the region boundaries or borders. So I'll switch over to overlap. I'll go to no grid snap. And if I were to just drag this one or trim this one over another region here, just like so, it looks the same as no overlap. But if I click on this region, you'll see that that region is still extending and being sort of tucked under this region, which has been trimmed over it. Now, if I deselect all of my audio, you'll see that the region on the right sort of takes precedence over the one on the left. And that'll go for all of these. If I drag this over, if I drag this over, and then click over here to deselect, the region on the right is the one that's going to overlap the regions on the left. Now, what's misunderstood about this is some people might confuse this as an overlap and play both the regions function. That's not what this does. Only the region that you see shown is the region that's going to play, at least with audio. Now, something I actually find the overlap drag mode useful for is when you're working with multiple MIDI regions that you want to overlap and edit together or merge together. So here I have four different MIDI regions all playing different parts of like a harmony and melody idea. So those are the four different parts. Now, if I were to use no overlap mode, if I dragged one over the other, like I said before, it'll just replace the one that's there and delete the original MIDI region. But with overlap mode, I can overlap all of these on top of each other. And unlike audio regions, you can actually play these all at the same time. So it'll play all of those overlapping regions. You can drag over them, double click, and you can even open up and look at all of them in the piano roll editor. And if you want to merge these together, you just drag over them all and then press J to apply the join per track function, which will effectively merge them together. Now there is another way to do this. If you'd like to do this in real time, simply go up to Logic Pro settings recording 
And then from here under the MIDI overlapping track recordings option, you can set this to merge to merge together your recordings in real time, or you can simply select overlap and this will overlap the regions without merging them together. So that's another way to do it if you wanna do it in real time instead of using the overlap function. Okay, lastly, we have the shuffle functions. And for that, I'm gonna jump back to my previous project. Okay, I'm back and I wanna show you the shuffle drag modes. Shuffle editing allows you to place regions adjacent to each other or reorder regions in a series like these where I have these cut up into different one bar regions. Really the length of the region doesn't matter, but it allows you to place regions adjacent to each other if they are not already adjacent to each other. So for example, I've got this region over here off to the side, and if I just pull it in a little bit, you'll see it automatically sort of snaps to the nearest region to the left. But to demonstrate this in better detail, what I'm gonna do is colorize some of these regions so you can better visually see what's actually happening with the shuffle drag modes. With shuffle left, what this does is it will shuffle things automatically to the left if I trim or delete them. So for example, if I select this region and delete it, the other two regions that were over here are automatically going to be shuffled over to the left. Likewise, if I use shuffle right, things will be shuffled over to the right. So if I delete that same region, now the region will be shuffled over to the right rather than over to the left. And this also applies to trimming. So if I were to select a region or regions and trim them up a bit and then let go, the regions will automatically shuffle over to the right. And if I use shuffle left, the opposite will happen. If I go ahead and do that exact same function, let go, and then everything shuffles over to the left. So that's the main difference between shuffle right and shuffle left. Now for this next example, I wanna show you the shuffle left or right doesn't really matter. It just has to be one of the two shuffle modes. But one of the things that's really helpful with shuffle editing is you can reorder things in a sequence. So let's say, for example, that I want this region to be here and I want this region to be here. Now, normally without shuffle mode on, you would just have to kind of move these out, move this in, move this over, move this over, and then move this in. It takes a few more mouse clicks to do that. With shuffle editing, what you can do instead is just select either shuffle left or right, it's not gonna matter, and you just drag the clip or the region on top of the clip you wanna replace it with. So if I want this yellow one to replace the red one and I want the red one to move over, I just simply click and drag, and it automatically shuffles over that red clip. Likewise, if I want the blue one to replace the green one or vice versa, I want the green one to replace the blue one and I want the blue one to come in toward the center, I just drag it out here and then it shuffles that in. So this is a really handy and easy way to reorder regions in a sequence like this, but still sort of maintain the entire sequence of all of these adjacent regions. Okay, so shuffle editing I find really helpful when you're trying to work with voiceover tracks where you're just recording some narration that's not necessarily synced to audio and you just need to edit out all of the mistakes and there may be certain parts of the recording where you've got ums and ahs and breaths and, and maybe you make some mistakes, you have to repeat some lines. So that's what I really find this helpful for. So this is really similar to like ripple editing that you'd see in video editors, but just for audio. And there are also some really helpful key commands I'll show you for this that make this workflow go even faster. So what I did off screen is I re-recorded the intro to this video just without any video, just dialogue, and I intentionally left some spaces. I've got a bit of a cold right now, so I've got some coughing and you know I'm clearing my throat and stuff. So these are all things that I want to edit out of the dialogue. So let's give this a listen. This very first line is just me coughing, and then I start off the first phrase and then I stop. Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and <clears throat> Yeah, so obviously there's some stuff I need to cut out. You can use the scissors tool or the marquee tool for this. I'm gonna use the marquee tool and I'm also going to turn off my grid snap. And I've got my drag mode set to shuffle left. If I were to drag over all of this and just hit delete, 
it automatically shuffles everything over to the left. So I can just continue listening and listen for the next mistake. Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I wanna show you how to use the drag modes in Logic Pro. Drag modes effect. So if I wanted to get rid of this gap, I just drag over the gap, hit delete, and everything's automatically shuffled over to the left. I can see that this is just like a cough or something. So I'll do the same thing, drag over this, hit delete, and it auto shuffles it over. You can even get rid of little breaths and little gaps in between the phrases if you like. Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I wanna show you how to use the drag modes in Logic Pro. Drag modes affect how regions are treated as you move them or drag them around on the timeline. Now the reason why I waited so long to introduce the drag modes is that they sort of interplay with many of Logic's editing functions and tools, along with the snap grip. So there's a mistake. Just drag over that, hit delete, and it auto shuffles it over. Tools, along with the grid snap modes. So you kind of have to be familiar with basic editing in the tracks area first before you can start using the drag modes effectively. And there we go. So I've shortened a narration with a bunch of mistakes into something that's more condensed and has all of the mistakes removed. Now, another thing I wanna show you is if you're not actually using shuffle mode, if I put this back on like maybe X fade or something, and you go through and you start removing gaps and pauses and ums and ahs and breaths and things like that, you'll actually end up with something that looks more like this, where you've just got all these like assorted regions out on the timeline and they're not really strung together. They're not adjacent with each other. There's a really quick and handy shortcut for this. If you drag over all of these and you press option and the left bracket. Now by the left bracket, I mean the bracket that is just to the right of the P key on the keyboard. So option left bracket, this will auto shuffle everything over to the left. And likewise, if I drag over these and press option right bracket, this will shuffle everything over to the right. So what I often find myself doing is not actually using the shuffle drag mode, but actually just going through with maybe an X fade mode or some other drag mode, deleting the spots where I make mistakes. And then at the very end, I just drag over everything and hit option left bracket and it consolidates everything together. And then I can use my control option X shortcut to add a quick crossfade to each of the joining points. So it really speeds up my narration and dialogue editing workflow. So those are the drag modes in Logic Pro. There are probably more uses for these than I've demonstrated in this video, but that's mainly what I use these for. About 90% of the time, I find myself just using X fade or no overlap. I don't really use the overlap mode very much, and the shuffle modes, I typically just stick with those shortcuts I just demonstrated. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.